Hey guys, today I want to cover a couple of things. Now one of my subscribers recently messaged me on the comment board and he asked me if I could make a video on painting techniques. So I messaged him back, I asked him, what specifically do you need help with as far as what you're asking me in painting techniques? Now he said he was having a problem with striping and that could be many things that can cause striping. So we're gonna cover a couple of things First, we're gonna start with, we're gonna check our gun to make sure our gun is working properly. The second thing we're gonna check is our pressure to make sure you're using the right pressure when spraying. The third thing we're gonna go check is we're gonna check the distance and the speed that you should be using when applying paint to a panel. And the last thing we're gonna check is a combination of things that I would like to mention for you guys to check that everything is working properly and you're not getting striped because of certain things that you might not be sure of. Now, let's get started. I'm gonna check my gun. I'm gonna show you how to check it properly. That way, you can start off by knowing it's not your gun. Okay, so when spraying your base coat, you wanna make sure that your gun is working properly. Now, the right way to do this is to check the distance like this. You put your fingers like this, your thumb and your pinky, you stretch it out, and you put your pinky against a piece of paper or plastic, and you spray it. Now, this is a straight, even line. This is what you wanna see. Okay, you see this pattern? This is a nice, straight, even line. It's nice and oval, it's straight, and it evenly coated my piece of paper. Now, if you don't have something like this, and you have maybe more material on the top and on the bottom, and the middle looks like it's not getting enough paint, your gun might be having problems and you might have to repair it with a repair kit or you might just have to buy a new gun. But first and foremost, check your gun. Make sure it's working properly. Okay, so every once in a while when I'm painting, right before I start applying my base coat, I'll do a test like this of my gun just to make sure it's working properly. So if I have a car in the booth, let's say, and I have plastic on the car, I'll do a test spray just like this right before I start base coating. And I do this at least once a week just to make sure my gun is working properly and it's not going all cattywampus because it happens. Sometimes your gun starts working poorly when you use it a lot. It has gaskets and things that end up going bad eventually and your gun starts to spray cattywampus. It just starts to spray poorly. So doing this test at least once a week gives me a peace of mind that I know that my gun is spraying properly. So that's something to consider when checking your gun every once in a while. This is very important. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna check our air pressure. Now air pressure is very important. If you use too much air, it's gonna cause you to stripe and you're not gonna apply the paint properly and it's not gonna spread the metallic evenly. If you have too little stripes, you're gonna get blotchiness. It's gonna put the paint on too wet and you don't want that. You want medium to wet coats. And this is the kind of air pressure you should be using when spraying base coat. Now, if you don't have an air regulator like this, it's good to have one to make sure you're able to check your air properly. Air can fluctuate up and down when you're painting. Sometimes it'll go higher and sometimes it'll go lower. When an air pressure gauge like this, you can check it to make sure it's not fluctuating and make adjustments the way you need to. Now, Let's see something right here. Now, the air pressure should be at 20 PSI. That's basically right here where this green line is. This is the optimum air pressure to spray base coat. That's where you wanna be. So you put 20 PSI. Once you got your air pressure set, you can start painting. Now let's go to my panel and I'm gonna show you how you want to apply and how much distance you should have between the gun and the pan. Now here I have a new hood. I've already coated it with sealer, so I'm just gonna show you how to base coat it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply two coats, well, I'm gonna apply a coat of paint to a certain amount to show you how it's supposed to look and how much distance you're supposed to keep. Now when I'm painting, my gun is always like two to three inches away from the panel. That's how far I keep it, and that's how it's always been for me. Sometimes, you know, depending on how 
how I'm moving, they're gonna move up and down. That's why I'm saying two to three inches. And I move evenly. I don't really go by speed. I go by the way the paint is being applied. That's what you wanna look for. That's why I say you wanna apply your coats medium wet. Now, you see how I applied my paint? That's what you want to do. I'm going to show you how it looks that way you can get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. You see that? You see how it looks? It's not very wet. It's like semi-gloss shiny and it's not so so covered up that it covered on the first coat. That means I didn't apply it very wet. I kept it nice and even and moving one inch at a time. So what I mean with one inch at a time is when you're moving your gun back and forth, you want a one inch overlap. That means you overlap the first coat that you put one inch and you go on and so forth, up and down, just like that. And I only keep my gun like two to three inches away from the path. Now what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm gonna try to hold the camera while I'm base coating, but you can see how I'm base coating and the distance I'm keeping my gun. I'm gonna try. Hopefully I could get the camera to behave. I'm about two or three inches and I'm just gonna go up and down. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what happened when I was spraying that coat. Right here, you see how dark it is? That's what happened when I got too close with the gun because I was holding the camera in one hand and my gun in the other. I was trying to do two things at the same time. So my arm kind of went down a little bit and I moved a little bit slower. But look at that. You see the difference? That's what your first coat should look like. When it looks like this, this should be how your second coat looks, like this. Now, two to three inches should be sufficient enough to keep away from your pattern. As long as you're moving evenly, keeping a medium to wet coat, you should be good. If you see striping, remember what I told you. Check your gun to make sure it's working properly and make sure your pressure is proper. Too much pressure will cause you striping and too little pressure will cause you blotchiness. Now, I'm gonna keep going with this, finish covering this, and I'm gonna tell you something else that you need to check. Now, the only thing you need to worry about speed is that however your gun is spraying and however it's applying your base coat is how you have to make your speed adjustment. That's all you need to know. Medium to wet coats, and just keep going in that speed. As long as you're going medium to wet coats, you should be good. You shouldn't have no stripes like that, okay? Okay guys, I'm gonna start coating this. I'm gonna try to place the camera in the angle that you guys can see it. Hopefully you guys can get an idea of how I apply the base coat. And that's it, not a big deal. thing I want to tell you about is flaring out your gun. Flaring out your gun is a technique that all painters use when stopping at one point and to come back in the other direction. It's just something that we do. It's like second nature. I don't even notice it anymore that I do it. I just do it and with time you basically teach yourself to do it and you don't notice it anymore. So what I mean when, I'm, when I say flare out your gun is that. Now this is what I mean when I say flaring out your gun. Now I'm going to start at one point, when I come to this point, I'm going to flare out my gun this way. And then when I come back to this point, I'm going to flare out my gun this way. While letting go of the trigger and pressing the trigger as I do it. So let me show you. So I do, so what I do is a quick flick of the gun and I let go of the trigger and I come back in the other direction and I do the same thing. I flick it, let go of the trigger and come back in the other direction. This is to help avoid buildup on every time you go from one panel to the next when you're painting. 
Okay, so if you notice on your gun, right, there's two different levels to pull the trigger. The first half is air. Now when you fully depress the trigger, that's when the material starts to come up. See that? So when I'm doing that flick of the wrist, that flare out as I call it, I'm letting go of the trigger to the point where I'm not using material anymore. I don't let it go all the way. I don't let it go all the way out like this. I Once I have the trigger fully depressed, I just let it go to the point where there's just air coming out of it like this. Now, it takes practice. Eventually you get it and it becomes second nature. You just don't even notice it anymore. I don't even notice it anymore. So that's something that you can practice on and that just helps to make sure that if you're painting from panel to panel, you're not getting built up with your paint by just going from one panel to the next without flaring out your gun. So that's another tip that I'm giving you guys to try out when you're trying some of these painting techniques. Now, one thing I want to mention to you guys, now I'm in my paint room. One thing I want to mention to you guys about paint. You do not want to over-reduce your paint. Over-reduced paint will cause striping. That is a big problem with some people that don't understand that over-reducing it to make it thinner for it to come out smoother will cause striping. Now, the reason these mix ratios are put in place is so that when you apply your paint, your paint is applied properly and your metallics are laid down the way that they're supposed to. That's one thing you gotta think about by reducing your paint properly. Two to one is usually the proper mix ratio for most paints, especially in solid line. Waterborne paint is mixed differently. It's mixed with water and it's mixed by percentages. But since I mix solvent, let's just stick to that right now. Remember that. Do not over reduce your paint. That will cause strike. All right, I gotta get back to work. Now, since I live in the Northeast, I'm able to use a medium reducer even during the winter time because I have a booth with a bake cycle and it's a heated booth. So I can basically control how I want the air quality to be in the booth. So I could choose between medium and slow. But technically at this time of the year, in the winter time is the time right now, I use the medium and I keep my booth temperature like around 72 to 75 degrees and that's very helpful. But if you don't have these things, you do have to consider the reducer. So it's either gonna be slow, medium, or fast. And when, spray, and when spraying silvers, fast is not a very good option even if it's cold. So consider that. All right guys, now it's time to clear. Now I have a good video on how to clear that. I cover all these techniques and from distance to speed to everything I do when I clear. I'll link it right here for you guys to check it out and I'll link it at the end of this video. Let's get the clearing. guys hopefully that answered all your questions hopefully you learned something hopefully this is going to help you with your techniques and improving your paint work and if it did please be sure to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time i post a new video and i'll see you guys in the next one peace bye